guy. It's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story. That if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. This orc is busily sm uh, snacking on a steamed bun. As you approach, he wipes off one of his hands and sticks it out towards you. Hey, stranger, nice to see you. Zippy toe tag at your service. How are you liking Wampanoa Garden? You're awfully friendly, you don't even know me. We've never met before this, but I know exactly who you are. You're my replacement. Yellers had me autopsy what was left of Elder Gun and Elder. Nakamura after they got ripped apart, but I didn't want to dig any deeper. So since I don't know you, and I can smell Shadowrunner a mile away, you've got to be the outsider they asked to stop the killings, right? Zippy tilts his head back, obviously pleased as his amateur deduction. Very astute, that's right. See, I have good eyes. A lot of good eyes, actually. If you're in the market for replacements, only slightly used, and they only come from certified donors, I swear. A hearty belly laugh erupts from the orc, and he slaps one of his thighs in elation. Ha! <laughs> Man, I kill myself! Maybe it'll make it... Uh, sure. With jokes like that? Are you kidding me? I'm one of the only trained surgeons around here. I keep the other Wapanoans healthy and got practice, uh, and got a practice down the road. Blind Chen's a pretty good cyber doc, but he's basically an implant specialist, and that's it. How do you end up here? I did my residency back in the UCAS. Could have become a real MD too, if I hadn't gone south. If things hadn't gone south for un for unrelated reasons. Zibby opens his coat. Revealing a cyber deck, he pats it proudly. I also deck a little, but I'm better at slicing skin than I see. Wampanoa Garden seemed a good fit for me. So is it fairly peaceful around here? For the most part, other than these killings, we don't have much by way of problems. We do information security for the triads, and that makes us fairly impervious to anyone who wants to start trouble. Anyone who starts something... We hit him in the matrix while our triad friends hit him in the meat. Uh, hit it, them in meat space. Some small-time gangs have tried pushing in here before, but they backed off when they figured out we weren't that they weren't picking a fight with Tang and his guys. But with both the Red Dragon and Yellow Lotus, they got the message real quick. What was left of them anyway? Why can't you tell me about the elders? Well, they're an eclectic bunch, that's for sure. Better start. Ng's the spiritual leader here. She's got the voice... Uh, she's the voice of the Wapanoans, I guess. A lot of her close friends and really are really more of followers, since she's something of a priest for the machine spirits. Maybe it's a cultural thing for people who grew up here, but it's never called to me. Still, she makes a damn fine pot of tea. Ips the muscle. And he has an encyclopedic, encyclopedic knowledge of cyber and bioware, and bioware. Definitely a good guy to have watching your back. Not too friendly, but you know how it is. You get a lot of cyber, people start wondering if you'll tear their arms off. He's got moves straight out of Blood Carnival 3, The Reckoning. Terrible movie, but great fight choreography. There was also that guy with the tattoos. Oh yeah, that's Tang. I think he's even weirder than Ng on some level. 
I don't know much about him, but I think he's got some kind of fetish for auto automation. Found him cooing over some trids of automated delivery drones in a warehouse once. He works with drones, has a shop called the Blessed Auto Fab. But he was raving about the efficiency of the movement patterns or something. You already know about Tong, Ran Sims. Uh, Tong, Ran Sims, BTL, Skill Chips. Gan used to. He used to be a city planner before he had a nervous breakdown and got involved in st statistical analysis. Nak uh, Nakamura came from uh, uh, Fukuoka? I don't know. And was interested in entertainment, trade mostly. Spent most of his time analyzing subliminals and ads. And then there was Magpie. She was the chief decker, hot as hell against to IC, and built her own hardware. Salty old woman, though. Never met anyone who was uh, quite as shrill or nasty when she was mad. And she was mad most of the time. Wait, nobody mentioned... Uh, let's talk about something else. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. What are your thoughts on the murders? Pretty gruesome business. Gan died from a broken neck. Looked like someone had wrenched around and... His arms and legs were cut off. Some skin played away, too. Nakamura had his throat ripped out by someone with pretty sharp teeth. At first, I thought it was a devil rat, but the teeth marks were all from something with a humanoid jaw. I didn't look at Yutunde. Uh, from what I saw at a distance, it was the same story. Didn't seem much point since I'd seen it twice already. As for Tong, from what Porter told me, it was Gan and Nakamura all over again. Take a look at him yet? Yeah, it's the same as you described from the other, for the others. Damn, I like Tong. The BTL did business is unsavory, but the man had to eat, and his regular Sims were great. Generally, all around nice guy, friendly with everyone. Never had anyone mad at him. There ain't no justice, let me tell you. See you later, Zippy. Zippy the Wonder Turtle. The man in front of his stall is rooting through a box of music chips with the swift fingers of someone who knows what they're looking for. Behind him, a music player pumps out a constant stream of distorted atonal music. The stall's proprietor is nowhere to be seen. Can you believe this? They've got four bootlegs of Echelon 60, the unreleased Enoch uh, Ian Key's double chip the show from Brazzaville, but absolutely zero chips from Shotgun Bloom. This staff, uh, this stall stuff is pretty, is purely second rate. Hey man, don't get down on uh, Echelon 60. I saw them when they played the unlicensed show at the old Chocho Tart Factory out in Sung Wong. The show was amazing, even if the police had to break it up midway through the second, act, uh, second set. The music aficionado waved his hand dismissively. The show might have been great. Come on. Echelon 60's old news. They've already been mainstreamed. I saw a Trid ad for the new Mitsubishi Ostra scooter, and they were using Main Volt Underbus as the backing music. Made me sad, I tell ya. The Decker inclined his head lightly towards you. Moe Jnebi. At, at your service. Decker, technologist, music fan. You're not from around here, are you? You don't hold yourself like a native. I'm from the UCAS. I thought so. What brings you out here? I'm trying to find out who's been killing the elders. Oh, that's nasty business. I heard Tong died tonight. I don't know who or what pissed them off. Uh, I don't know who or what they pissed off. But it seems like a really bad scene. I'm trying to keep my nose out of it. Still, I like this place. Is there anything I can do to help? Uh... Know anything about the murders? I'm trying to stay as far away from that as possible. I'm not connected enough to hear anything important, and all the talk about monsters is just plain dark. I'm not afraid of monsters, but I don't want to get their attention. 
All I know is that a couple of months ago, we had elders Nakamura, Yatuda, Gun, and Magpie, and now we don't. Magpie? I've never heard of Magpie. Yes, I have, though. Magpie may not be related. She disappeared a month or so ago, just up and closed her shop one night. And nobody ever heard from her again. Sippy thinks she's on vacation, but I don't know. These killings started right after she, she disappeared, so maybe she's in hiding. And it's taking care of some of... The, uh, taking care of the other elders one by one. Why would she do that? To be blunt, he's a hateful, shrewish old bang... Uh, old badger of a person. She was... It was always her way of the highway. She butt heads with the other elders over damn near everything. The last fight she had was with Tang over something or other. Guess she ended up throwing some of his micro drones into the deep fryer and threatening to kick his ass out of the block. What was her line of business? Matrix gear. Her shop, her shop's called the Jackpot, the Jackpoint. Not very imaginative, I know. She always had the hottest programs, the best ships, and made some killer decks for anybody willing to pay her rates. It cost plenty of neon, but she was one of the best in the business, at least in Hong Kong. If you want to know more about her, you should talk to Zippy. She, he's one of the only people around here who got along with Magpie. You can probably find him in the MTR by the MTR station. He loves the steam bunk cart over there. Yeah, I know where to find him. Okay, get the key to Magpie's shop. Maybe I can get it from uh, from Zippy. I thought Magpie was the one who brain fried, so that's why I was like, oh, don't worry about it. But I guess not. No, you're supposed to talk to Zippy, you moron. Can you tell me more about Elder Magpie? <sighs> How did you think uh, Magpie and the Elders got along? They never saw eye to eye. She was contrary for the sake of it. it. Most of the rest had a grand vision for what they wanted this neighborhood to become. Magpie just wanted to deck. She was only an Elder because they needed someone with her Matrix chops. The last big argument between her, Ng Ip, and Nakamura, Nakamura it was over something relatively trivial. I think Nakamura wanted to expand the private trip business into the Matrix. And she just absolutely refused. Why did she refuse? She said something about not using up valuable bandwidth for trivial entertainment bullshit. Anyway, it went from there into this rant about how she's not going to let Tang expand his drone business any further because it would get too much like Meg it would get too much Mega Corp attention. They accused her of blocking them just because she could, which is probably true. Lots of screaming. What do you mean blocking them? Everybody needs her matrix skills for their businesses to run properly. There are other deckers, me, say, or Moe Jimby, Jinebi, Yebi. But she had the infrastructure. If their project didn't interest her, she wouldn't even give them the time of day. She was real hard hat about having her time wasted, but she figures that if she's not interested in something, it has no a value objectively. Kind of a major blind spot, if you ask me. Sounds like she was critical. Yes and no, she was, but since she disappeared, Elder Ip's taken over running the Matrix Center for infrastructure. He's not as good as she was, but his experience with drones makes them the best. Makes him the best candidate. They wouldn't entrust someone like uh, something like that to anyone who wasn't an elder. So there you go. Can you tell me more? Where do you think she went? No idea. One day she was here, the next she was gone. Poof. At first I thought she was on vacation, since she had mentioned wanting to see the Kingdom of Hawaii someday. But it didn't feel right. She would at least told me she was leaving. It seems mighty suspicious to me. Nobody else seems to care what happened to her. Probably because she pissed them off so bad. Is there any place you think I should start looking? You might want to check out her shop. It's all locked up, but the other elders have a spare key. Couldn't hurt to look around, and even though Magpie was always butting heads with the other elders, they wouldn't have any reason not to let you in. Oh, I know all this. What do they argue about? 
Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. I know. I know. Could you let me in? No can do. Not because I don't want to, but because I don't have the key. You'd have to get it from it. He's taken over all the matrix infrastructure maintenance since Magpie disappeared. He's not as good as she is or as I am, but they're not going to let anyone who isn't an elder take care of that kind of critical stuff. See you later, Zippy. I gotta go do a thing. Why didn't you tell me about Elder Magpie disappearing? Why will we have her departure from the Wapoans isn't related to your investigation? It happened before the killings began. I'm I'm certain she's off skulking somewhere. No they no doubt she'll come waltzing back next month, all full of attitude and that life dared to go on without asking her permission. If she does, we'll welcome her back despite our problems with her behavior. Her skills make her extremely valuable. I've taken over maintenance of our mat matrix infrastructure in her absence, but I'm nowhere near her level. The best I can do is ensure nothing breaks down until she returns. Can I have a look around her shop? Good, I have the key. Yes, but there's a lot of sensitive equipment in there, including our community servers. We don't let anyone in who's not a Wampanoan elder in there. Why would you need to look around? I guess I don't really need to go in there. Well, guess I'm getting into the shop. Oh, hey, look at this guy. man has a tired world well, weary demeanor about him. His eyes track your movements with penetrating critical precision. Something about him, the lines about his eyes perhaps, make you suspect he's seen a lot of terrible things happen. He lifts his cup, the cup of cheap soy calf as you, as you approach. Let me guess, you're the freelancers, the, the elders are paying to look into the murders around here. How'd you know? You've got the right kind of eye. Like you're looking for something, and don't seem to trust anyone. Outsiders don't generally wander around Wampano Garden without an escort. Locals don't make them feel too welcome unless they've been invited. And there's only one reason to be inviting Shadowrunners out here. Call me Demergo. I'm not one of the Wampanoans, but I've been here long enough that they don't think twice about me being here. Demergo drains the last of his, soul, his soy calf in a large gulp. What have you found so far? You're awfully curious for a random guy. Professional curiosity. I used to be with the New York Police Department as part of their thaumological research division. Part of the CSI branch, except I did the magical investigation while the other guys pulled prints and checked blood samples. The mayor go, Tosses the soy calf cup towards the nearby trash can. It bounces around the rim and rolls inside. When I hear about the, the shit like this happening, I keep an ear to the ground. Old habits, you know. So, why aren't you investigating it? Elder Ng told me to look into the killings after the first... Asked me to look into the killings after the first murder. She couldn't afford my fee, though, so I took a pass. It's not just the money, either. Demergo shudders, holding his arms across his chest. You see that stuff day after day? You pay a price. It eats away at you. You know what it's like to feel all that sickness and anger every day? To be asked to pick up a murder weapon and relive somebody's death? Feel it going into your neck? Pleading in the voice of the dead woman for a killer to spare you? These days I'd rather interrogate the living, thanks. All things considered, that could be useful. Tamergo nods, though his expression is still one of disgust and sickness. 
sure if you're appraising antiques, you're trying to find where a lost cat went, but turning that on murder scenes is an invitation to horrors beyond imagining. I can read objects. It's called psychometry. A little trick I managed to pick up. I don't really know how. I hold on to something, I can tell what's happened to it. Who owned it? How it killed someone? How, if someone loved it or was afraid of it? Useful, but it'll tax your heart. And before you ask, no. I'm not going to read anything you find. I already told them I didn't want any part of this. Want advice? I'll give you that. But I'm not getting drawn any further than that. So aside from that, is there any help I can do? Is there anything I can help you with? Tung wasn't afraid when he died. He was caught by surprise. Smurgo arches an eyebrow. That's not what I would have expected. With the amount of mess at each scene, the victim should have at least left behind his hell of a lot of fear and pain. Are you sure? Very sure. Tong died tonight, so the astral signature hasn't had time to fade. There was only a sense of perfunctory accomplishment. And it sounds like it wasn't a crime of passion. A planned attack would have had would have that kind of resonance, in my experience. It's possible the gore show is to throw anyone off uh, throw off anyone looking for the actual reason. Yeah, if I wanted to kill someone and get away with it, I'd try to point the finger at some kind of monster. Demirgo opens his eyes and smiles a thin, humorless grin. Basic investigation 101. It's usually the simplest explanation, but don't discount other possibilities. You think the mess wasn't incidental? It's a possibility. Ask yourself this. If the mutilation happened after Tong's death, why would a killer perform that kind of ritual? Serial killers who engage in that kind of ritual don't feel perfunctory about it in my experience. It tends to feel more like they're taking communion. It's a religious or sexual feeling most of the time. If it didn't feel that way, I don't think the killer is actually pathological. What do you know about the murders? They started a couple weeks ago. Elder Gon was the first to go. That's when N asked me if I could look into them. He was ripped apart, arms wrenched out of their sockets, skin flayed away with a razor sharp knife. The rest have been the same. Whatever did it sure didn't care about being clean death. The funny thing is, the Hong Kong police force was out here a few weeks before that. Maybe even a month ago, tops. I know that doesn't seem like much, but the Wampanoans don't usually let the police in here. That by itself is odd enough, but it gets even stranger. The officers were loaded for bear, too. Big guns, heavy armor with them with MBC seals, the works. They went into the parking garage near here, and there was some some kind of gunfight. Never made it back out. When backup showed up, Wampanoans uh, chased them away. Why would they let the cops in and chase them away? That's exactly the kind of question you should be asking. And that, the elders refused to answer when I asked. Go take a look for yourself if you want. Watch out though, gangs taking up residence in there, dealing drugs and BTLs. They call themselves the Red Spear. Not too violent if you don't push them, but be careful what you say. See you later. We're gonna go and find that freaking parking garage. That sounds like a great lead. I'm gonna say, yep, parking garage is here. Let's see if we can resolve this peacefully. That's far enough, guy. The woman hefts her weapon, tossing a nod towards the gangers behind her. This lot's our turf. If you're looking for a fix, you're welcome to trade. If you're not here for business, clear the hell out. You try and wander around here, around on our turf, we're going to have to air you out. So, what do you say? You looking for a little pick-me-up? A little nitro to give you some pep? 
Maybe you want some chips, take the edge off. You want it? I got it. Well, let's start with this. Show me what you have. Combat stim. Five rounds. It's all consumables. I hate consumables. What happened in the fight here? As far as I know, some police showed up looking for somebody. They got in here, all of them got killed. Whoever they were after... Whoever they were after was long gone by the time we showed up. Used to be a lot of Wampanoans living here. They all cleared out, muttering about ghosts and shit like that. Have you heard anything else about the murders? Nothing much. I tell you what, though. I've got a guy named Kang, and he was down in the Storm Dream system last week. Something was moving down there. Big, too. Man-sized. But it wasn't speaking any language Kang understood. The kid beat feet back here as fast as he could. Dumbass dropped his Storm Drain key down. Uh, uh, dropped his Storm Drain key on the way, though. You wanna go looking for it? For whatever it was? You'll we'll have to get a new key from somebody else. Kang stole his from a city worker. Who else might have a key to the Storm Drains? There's a guy named Porter Lamb who's got keys to pretty much everything. He's something between a cop and a hand handyman. Ewan also mentioned some elf woman with crazy color hair who, who managed to scam a key. He said she hunted paracritters down there. Devil rats and shit. Uh, ma, ma, ma. See you later. We're gonna start with Porter. See if he will give his stuff up willingly. Do you have a key to the storm drain drainage system? Sure. Why do you ask? Drop a gun down a grate or something? Following up a lead on the killer. In that case, take, uh, take the damn key. You'll have to forgive me if I don't want to go down there with you. Porter peels an antique Yale style key uh, off of a key ring and, play, and hands it to you. Knock yourself out, man. There's an entrance up by the J Mountain restaurant. Can't miss it. See you later, dude. Bye, duder. Okay, here we go. That's the storm drain right there. So we're gonna go down to the storm drain and see what we got down there. Oh, storm drain. What we got going on down here, eh? Oh, that's something to look at right there, there. Despite the darkness, you see some there's something glittering at the edge of the drain. Look, looking closely, it appears to be a necklace chain of some kind. It has become caught in the drain's grate, narrowly avoiding falling in, down a deep pit. Take the necklace. Lift the necklace out of the grain, you turn it in your hand, and it's a simple silver pendant on a chain. The silver pendant depicts a long-tailed bird in flight, a magpie. Oh man, sounds like she's been doing the killing body parts. The disgusting pile of stinking human remains smells strongly of blood in the first stage of, de of decay. The arms, legs, and organs that are heaped together like stacked fire loose the firewood leaking blood and gore across the floor. The parts contained therein appear to be sliced away from the, pa uh, from the parent body rather than torn or bitten. Judging by the clean edges on the cut, the blade used to sever these parts was extremely sharp. This whole this is a whole world of messed up Caesar. You think the killer stashed these here? They're stacked. They've been organized. This is our killer alright. Looking closer to the pile one part stands out. It's a severed forearm and it's covered in tattoos. Words in a Slavic language and a shining lighthouse adorn the forearm and ring like images are inked on each finger. On the back of the hand there's a skull inside a square. Whoever owned this arm isn't likely to be Wampanoan. 
as the tattoos looked like they were poorly drawn and inked by hand, rather than a machine, most likely Russian criminal tattoos. Magpie's down here. Oh, there's a big old hole. Hey guys, I'm Alex. Uh, you know, the guy from the videos. So, uh, I, I just wanted to thank you for watching the video all the way through. You know, it, it, it's a lot of work. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, so, you know, thank you for your uh, your view, maybe your subscription. So you can subscribe right in the bottom corner there. Uh, then you can, then you'll be updated. Make sure to ring that notification bell. Guys, you know, subscriptions seem to mean nothing on YouTube anymore. But hey. Uh, so then over here, you'll see a video that you might like since you watched this video all the way through. Uh, other than that, have a great day. I hope that you watch more. Uh, I'd love to see you again. We do stream, so keep an eye out for that. Announcements will be on the channel, my Twitter, all that stuff. All the information is on the overlay. Other than that, enjoy. Enjoy your stay on 6th Street.